This lecture supports your learning during Module 4 of TECM 5190. I want to help you synthesize and make connections or distinctions among several topics you've been learning about so far. First, I'll help you distinguish between linguistic style and writing style. Second, I'll help you connect linguistic style to tone of voice. Third, I'll help you connect tone of voice and plain language. And then at the end, I'll help you synthesize all of these concepts using a sample about us page. We'll start with a little context. I promise not to go too far afield here, but you should know that style has a long intellectual history. Aristotle's rhetoric, written around 350 BC, distinguished the development of a message into three parts. Invention, or the development of a persuasive argument. Arrangement, the effective organization of that argument. And style, the way the argument was presented in order to influence the audience. The way style has been primarily used since Aristotle is prescriptive. It's about what people should do. That's the way we've defined writing style in the Module 1 lecture. The mechanical writing choices people should make in order to follow whatever standards apply to the content they create. At least from the 20th century, linguists have also talked about style, by which we mean variations in language. Unlike in the rhetorical tradition, a linguistics focus is descriptive. You learned about this a little bit in the required materials for Module 2. It's about observing what people actually do, with no interest in choosing one variation as the best. The fact that there's a 40-year-old research journal titled World Englishes, yes, with a plural, is a compelling piece of evidence that linguists respect all varieties of all languages, including English. Within a single language like English, there are several ways linguists talk about sources or causes of variation. Many linguists refer to all types of variation as style. I'll continue to call that linguistic style. One way linguists discuss variation is by noting how dialects of a single language like English vary. There are three types of dialects. A temporal dialect is defined by a time in history, so the language of Shakespeare is different from current English. A geographic dialect is defined by place. The English of Australia is different from that of Scotland. And as the map shows, ancient languages had different dialects too. A social dialect is defined by social groups. The English of your grandmother is different from that of a teenager. Another way to talk about social variation is called register, how language differs within a specific situation or context. So your teenage son might use different English with his grandmother than with his teenage friends. Linguists call that style shifting. Similarly, your English in an academic paper might differ from your English at work. Linguists usually call this type of variation a genre difference. It should be obvious that language is an important way for us to display our social identities. Part of what you learned in Module 2 was that linguists talk about different levels of language, from phonetics and phonology to syntax and semantics. It turns out that language can vary at any of those levels. Linguists observe and explain those variations in dialects, registers, and genres, but we don't tell anyone which variation to use. In short, linguistic style describes any variation in language. The word Coke means only Coca-Cola for some people, but it means any carbonated drink for others. Writing style describes a choice in language based on a standard. So, my husband told me to use Coke for all carbonated drinks when I'm talking to my in-laws, but I use it only for Coca-Cola with my own family because they follow a different standard. The heart of the difference is that it's a description for linguists and a prescription for me with my in-laws. Now that you know the difference between linguistic style and writing style, I want to help you connect linguistic style to tone of voice. In your instructional materials from Nielsen Norman Group, or NMG, you saw these two examples used to demonstrate four dimensions of tone of voice in the same message. The tone of example one is serious, formal, respectful, and matter of fact. In contrast, example two is a little less serious. 
a little more casual, a little more reverent, and definitely more enthusiastic. This is probably a good time to remind you that a company could choose the tone of either of these two messages as their brand voice. In the case of example two, that means the brand will in general be neither funny nor serious. It'll be casual, it'll be a little irreverent and enthusiastic. Even though that's the brand voice, there might be situations where a specific message requires the tone to be more like example one. Now let's dig a little deeper to understand how linguistic style or language variation was used to manipulate tone of voice in those examples. To make version two of the message funny, casual, irreverent, and enthusiastic, the word oops and an exclamation point were added at the beginning. The instructional materials in module two taught you that words are called lexemes or morphemes in linguistics. So we could describe the difference between the two messages as one of lexical style. The change in punctuation is orthographic. It's how language is coded in writing. Spelling's another type of orthographic style, but that's not used in this example. There are two other differences that do create the more casual tone of voice. We're sorry is more casual lexical style than we apologize. And the addition of on our end is also a more casual lexical style. So let me repeat, several lexical style choices made version two more casual, funny, irreverent, and enthusiastic than the tone in version one. Now I wanna help you connect what you're learning about tone of voice with what you've learned about plain language. We're gonna consider the tone of voice in a short plain language example I used in the module one lecture. If you remember, the message was used to discuss STE, Simplified Technical English. So here's how I perceive its tone using NNG's four dimensions. It's serious. I'd say it's neither formal nor casual, so I placed it midway on that dimension. It's respectful, and it's matter of fact. Here's the less plain version of that message. How's it line up on the four tone of voice dimensions? I think like the plain version, it's serious. And it's respectful and matter of fact, but it's definitely more formal than the plain version. I think we'll find the more balanced tone between formal and casual is typical of plain language but we'll consider more examples over the rest of the course before we make that conclusion. We'll also consider whether a plain language message can succeed when it's less serious, respectful, or matter of fact. Let's consider how linguistic style or language variation was used to manipulate the tone of voice in the plain and less plain versions of this message about the dangers of engine oil. Lexical style describes one difference, the plain version substitutes engine oil for the longer noun phrase in the less plain version. There are two sentence structure or syntactic style differences as well. The plain version has three sentences with an average length of eight words, while the less plain version is one sentence with 28 words. This difference makes the plain version more casual as well. In addition, the plain version uses the imperative structure do not get, while the less plain version uses oil can be toxic in a declarative structure. This difference makes the plain version's function as a directive to the reader more explicit and personal, and hence, I think, more casual. All right, at this point, I wanna help you synthesize what you know about all of these different concepts. In this final part of the lecture, I'll go through an example and talk about linguistic style, plain language, and tone of voice. I found an About Us page for a software company. I've changed the name of the business and a few facts, but otherwise this is the message exactly as it appeared on the web in January of 2021. Here's the original. I rewrote it in plain language. That's what you see on the right. For my purposes in this lecture, we're just gonna concentrate on the first paragraph, the first passage, 
of each version. Here are the stats for the original and plain language versions of the About Us page. The plain version is slightly shorter, with more sentences, but they're shorter on average. There was an improvement in all three of the readability scores shown here, but they're relatively small. Whether the plain version allows readers to get the message more easily and quickly is a question we can't answer without actual testing with representative readers. Take a second to read the first paragraph of the original. Here's how I perceive the tone of voice in the original on our four dimensions. A little bit on the serious side, neutral on the formal casual dimension, I'd say highly respectful, and matter of fact. Again, there's no way to know for sure how the intended audience perceives the tone without testing. Now read the plain language version I created. I believe the only change in tone from the original is that the plain version is on the casual side of the continuum. Let's consider how I altered linguistic style to create the plain language version and whether that affected tone of voice. The syntactic style of the plain version is shorter overall and shorter sentence length, which I think this is part of what leads to the more casual tone of voice. Another difference in the plain version is the lack of lexical repetition. The original used the word dependable twice, while the plain version used it just once. I'm not really convinced this one change alone altered the tone of voice. As I said, we actually need to test in order to find out. I also rewrote the message with a more serious tone. The original version was already on the serious side of the continuum, but here's a version that I think even more serious. I think it's moved the message toward the formal side of the continuum as well. The syntactic style of the more serious version is about the same sentence length as the original. There is a syntactic difference, however, because the more serious, more formal version uses passive structure, was established. The serious version also uses lexical or semantic variation to create more serious and more formal vocabulary. There's commitment instead of purpose, superior instead of better, operating system instead of platform. And in addition, the serious version uses reliable as a synonym for dependable instead of repeating the same word. Take a second to read the funny version I created. So it's certainly an attempt to be funnier. I believe it also has a more casual tone. It's a little on the irreverent side of the dimension and is now neutral in terms of the enthusiastic versus matter-of-fact dimension. Let's consider how I altered linguistic style to create the funny version. The syntactic style of the funny version is longer in sentence length. I think this is generally true about humor that depends solely on language. We'll see if you agree when you consider your classmates funny versions of messages and assignments during this module. Another difference in my funny version is the lexical or semantic variations in vocabulary. The original used dependable twice while the funny version doesn't use it at all. Instead, it uses the Spanish word for crazy twice. Take a second to review the formal version I created. What I did in this case was to work from the serious version that I created earlier and replace for us and other small lenders with for the developing enterprise and other enterprises in the small lender industry. I think that moves the tone more to the formal side of the dimension. I don't think it affects any of the other dimensions. The syntactic style of the formal version is longer than the original in terms of sentence length. As I mentioned, the formal version incorporates changes made in the serious version, so that means that it's got the passive syntax and the lexical or semantic choices that are both more serious and formal. Two additional lexical or semantic differences are replacing the short phrase small lenders with enterprises in the small lender industry, 
but I don't think any difference is as important as removing the pronoun us and using a noun phrase, developing enterprise, in its place. All pronouns tend to create a less formal, more casual tone. Finally, take a second to read the casual version I created. For this one, I worked from the plain language version I created earlier and moved some information out of the first sentence into separate, very short sentences. I also substituted the verb is for remains, and I think these changes moved the tone of voice toward the neutral area for enthusiastic versus matter of fact. Now let's consider the details for how I altered linguistic style to create the casual version. Compared to the original, the syntactic style of the casual version is shorter sentence length. In fact, the changes I made from the more casual plain language version I showed earlier result in the same 23 word sentence length. The words have just been moved around in this more casual version. That relates to another major difference in the orthographic style of this casual version, moving phrases describing users of the software to their own incomplete sentences. This type of syntax is common in conversation where subjects, predicates, phrases are often missing. That's called ellipsis. So using it in writing creates a more casual tone of voice. This table has the definitions I shared with you in the module one lecture with two changes. First, I've added a definition for linguistic style to the top row. It has a very general meaning, any variation in language. Second, I added the term prescriptive to the definitions for style, voice, and tone to make it clear that unlike linguistic style, which describes how language is used, these three qualities prescribe how language should be used. Linguistic style would describe the shoes people wear. Shoe style would prescribe which shoe to wear to be in style. Voice would prescribe which shoe to wear to be perceived as professional. And tone would prescribe which professional shoe to wear with a specific dress. When I said we won't talk that much about style in TECM 5190, I meant we won't talk much about prescribed style standards. We will, however, have to talk about linguistic style in order to analyze voice and tone. You don't have to memorize any of this. There is no test but I do want you to understand I'm choosing my terms carefully.